Hey guys, it's Kenny Clark with the Green Bay Packers, and you're listening to the Packer Fan Podcast. Your Packers sent the Rams back to L.A., and now the Buccaneers are coming to town. Title town, that is. Let's talk about it all, coming up on your Packers Fan Podcast. What's up, everybody? I'm Scott Clark from The Gaming Outsider, and I'm thinking that if the Packers can play like they did against the Rams from here on out, there's nothing stopping them from hoisting the Lombardi Trophy in February. This is the 224th episode of your Packers Fan Podcast, and we're so glad you're here with us. You betcha. And me, I'm Wayne Henderson from MediaVoiceOvers.com, and I'm looking forward to the Green Bay Packers reminding the Buccaneers why they never really belonged in our division. This week on the Packers Fan Podcast, we're going to recap all our favorite things from that epic victory over the Rams and count on us to share a ton of your fantastic voicemails as well as emails and other feedback. Also, we're going to preview the NFC Championship game against the Buccaneers, and then we'll wrap things up with my keys to a Packers victory and more football goodness in the coming week. All right, let's go ahead and kick things off with our highlights over the Rams this week. Wayne, why don't you start things off this week? Because I know you're super excited. Oh, I am. First off, I just want to say it's great to see all three of our running backs getting work. I mean, it was mm-hmm. we're spreading the ball around. They all run in a slightly different way, and I don't think that number one defense of the Rams knew what was coming. I agree. The The one nit I will say with this, as good as it is to see them running the ball and spreading the ball between multiple, uh, multiple backs, I'm not sure if the division game is the time to let Dylan prove himself. Because uh, he really? he did he did okay, we needed to see him more often in the in the regular season, and we didn't. It's not the time to test the waters with him. He hasn't been super explosive for me. I would have liked to have seen him get his footing a little bit, and uh, um, I don't know. I just I just feel nervous about testing the waters. But it was great to see uh, um, Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones just uh, just walking all over. And speaking of. How about Aaron Jones with that 60-something yard run on the first play from scrimmage in the second half? What a way to start that game. And then a few plays later, Jones ran it in for a touchdown. Of course, that means it's time to find those gold sunglasses that he so uh, he loves to show off. And he did. Yep, for sure. It's so refreshing, man, to see the Packers dominating on offense, not just with the passing game. I feel like the Packers have just been known for having a solid passing game, and now we're so much more well-rounded than ever before on offense, and it's just seriously so much fun to watch. I, I like We have a running game, and it's not just a blip on the radar. We've had a decent running game all year long, and it's been awesome to see. Yes, and it's, like you said, not just a blip. We're actually doing a lot of great runs. And mm-hmm. you know what that does? That opens up the passing game for AR-12. But then again, to prove that... He also can run it in. He ran in for that touchdown. Mm -hmm. I didn't know if it was really going to happen. Was he trying to juke the other player out? Was he trying to buy time? And boom, next thing you know, touchdown, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to see. It was not all beautiful because that muffed snap on the extra point attempt was no bueno. Uh, Mason had no choice but to try running it in himself. And, well, of course, that did not work. He got a little banged up on that tackle. But he seems okay because he did kick the field goal, you know, right before the half. And I think he's going to be all right. But I admit to being a little bit nervous for the minute. Yeah, just uh, because he's been so consistent this season. And thank goodness, you know, that we've stuck with him for so long because, you know, he had one season where he was a little rough, but he's been very, very good this season. Was it Mason that ran it in? I thought it was the placeholder. Or was Mason not kicking the extra point? I think the placeholder kind of did a pass or something or handoff to Mason, I believe. Oh, is that what it was? Okay. But if I'm wrong, that, we won the game. What does it matter? <laughs> as long right. as Mason's okay. Well, and then we tried to capitalize on it and go for two on the next score, which, by the way, can we talk about that score, when that, that pass to Adams? I, the defender, was it Arnold or Darnold, the, the, the one that everyone was predicting about the, the fantastic matchup? You know, Adams is is – in motion, going back and forth, back and forth, and then just rushes across there, and, and uh, Rogers tosses it to him on the in the end zone. And the the defender after the play is like, "How am I supposed to cover that? How am I? What am I supposed to do?" I was, and I don't know. It was kind of cool to see because a lot of people, a lot of players, get frustrated when they miss something like that. And I mean, it it wasn't his fault. Adams was just that good, <laughs> and and I don't know. It was it was a lot of fun to see. Well, remember. 
Devontae Adams, his route running is so spectacular that even Chad Ochocinco watches it and cries at how beautiful it is. Mm-hmm. He truly has the potential to be the best wide receiver in the league. It would be really hard to argue that he's not. And I know I'm biased, but I've heard other people that aren't Packers fans say that he's he's that good. So uh, let's also talk about the uh, the best defense in the game. And this time it wasn't the Rams defense. We had some nice sacks on Jared Goff in the game. Kenny Clark had a defensive dagger sack with five minutes left to go that pretty much sealed the deal. All around, our defense just looks solid. Sure, we allowed some points, but uh, that's expected in a divisional game. But it was nice to see to not see a ton of missed tackles or, or issues on special teams, finally. If there's a time you're ever going to do that, the playoffs is the time to make that happen. So thank you, Green Bay, for, for doing that. It's coming together, Scott, at just the right time. And mm-hmm. just a special shout-out to Robert Bobby Tunyon. He was bringing extreme, over-the-top energy all game long. And, of course, you saw that letter he wrote to the Packers and the Packers fans uh, the other day, and he just continued that on into the game, and it was just fun. Fun, fun, fun. Seriously, if you have not read that letter he wrote to the city of Green Bay, I highly recommend. We've got we've got it posted in our, in our Facebook group. It is a little bit long, but it's such a good read. You see a little bit behind the scenes of what it was like for – uh, as Aaron Rodgers calls him, Bobby T, to uh, start his career at Green Bay and some of the conversations that some of the others had had with him to encourage him. And it was just, it was very cool. Because some of those conversations were not necessarily fun conversations. They were, as we say at my school, come to Jesus moments. Oh. And uh, and he, he remin- hearing him reminisce about those and being appreciative for that was re- very cool to see. So I, I'm loving Tanya and the more and more I hear about him. So let's go over some stats. Lastly, for our highlights of the game, the Packer leaders were in the win column. So let's start with some with Aaron Rodgers. 23 out of 36, 296 yards, two touchdowns and a rushing touchdowns. Aaron Jones, 14 carries, 99 yards and a touchdown. Jamal Williams, 12 carries and 65 yards. Alan Lazard, four receptions, 96 yards and a touchdown. Devontae Adams, nine receptions, 66 yards and a touchdown. Bobby T, four receptions, 60 yards. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, four receptions for 33 yards. Equiminia St. Brown had a reception for 27 yards. It just goes on and on. Uh, We're doing what he does in terms of spreading the ball out. And it's fantastic to see. But I'm not done yet. Uh, Rashawn Gary, Kenny Clark, and Zadarius Smith all had sacks. Mason Crosby was two for two on field goals. And this was all against, quote, the best defense in the league. The best defense. So if we can do that against the best defense in the league, imagine what we can do to the second or third or fourth or fifth best defense in the league, whatever the Bucs are doing next week. I I can't wait to see what they do. And of course, there were low lights because A.J. Dillon got injured a little bit on that fumble play. And mm-hmm. although it was great to see Aaron Rodgers jump in and pick up that fumble, it was a little scary because it looked like Aaron Rodgers could have been absolutely pummeled at any given second. But we are certainly hoping that uh, A.J. Dillon's just a little banged up and will be fine for when the Buccaneers come to town. Absolutely. And if not, we've still got you know Williams and, and Jones. Our, our running game is still solid, but uh, we definitely wish... Uh, Mr. Dillon, all the best in the world. Also, our our defense started playing a, a bit soft in the third quarter. I'm I'm I don't know about you, Wayne, but I'm really tired of that. <laughs> I don't care if we're up by 40 points. I, I understand conserving for the the last two games and whatnot, but that just that seems to be our mo this season. And what's interesting to me is this is backwards from what I remember watching the pack in the 90s. It always felt like when I was a kid that the Packers were always playing come from behind in the third quarter. And the third quarter was always where we just lit a fire under our butts and came back and were able to win games under Favre. With that said, I would much rather defend a lead than try to come from behind. But still, stop stop you know easing up in the third quarter. We, we Especially with Brady, man. We've seen what Brady can do in, in the final moments of games. It's like no lead is too big for him to overcome. So we just cannot do that. Do you agree? I do agree. But I would say that we're up, if we're up by, say, 60 points in the fourth quarter, that would be too big for even Tom Brady to overcome. All right. 60 points, yeah. But uh, if that happens, Wayne, I will text you and say, okay, let's, let's bench Rodgers for the rest <laughs> of the game. Uh, I'm just throwing stuff against the wall. Sure. 
I th- that's about it we've got for lowlights. There there wasn't a ton of negative things that happened in that game. It was mostly good. And here's to hoping that continues for the next uh, couple weeks for us, or at least one more week, because, man, Packers in the Super Bowl just sounds mm, uh, sounds really good. But we do have some interesting news in terms of the Packers. First off, Aaron Rodgers is going to guest host at least one episode of the Jeopardy! game show very soon. Again, guest host. He's not going to be a contestant. He was a contestant back in 2015, where he actually won $50,000 for his charity. But this is actually... Uh, the the producers of Jeopardy bringing in guest hosts since uh, Alex Trebek unfortunately passed in November. They've been kind of bringing in guest hosts for that. And Aaron Rodgers was asked to be one of them. So that's kind of cool. Might get me to watch Jeopardy. I don't remember the last time I watched Jeopardy. I watch Jeopardy a lot. And do you so, really? Yes, I do. There's some very difficult categories. It's not the game show I would want to compete on in person because I would get smoked. But I do like watching it. And yeah, there's been quite a few athletes and actors and things like that that have been contestants for charity, but not very many get selected to actually be trusted with hosting the episode. So huge props to Aaron Rodgers. I am not positive whether or not they've already been taped or they're going to be taped soon, but either way, it'll be coming soon and I'm sure we'll hear about it. So it's. I hope that it hasn't been taped. I hope it's something that happens after the season is over because that's something that I wouldn't want in his head. At all, <laughs> you know what I mean. I don't. I don't want him. That, that, that's time taking away from thinking about football. But that's Good point. Me. Good point. Let's move on to some listener feedback. Just as a reminder, if you'd like to give us a call and leave us a voicemail, that number is nine two zero three Pack Go. Or you can also send your voice message to feedback at packersfanpodcast dot com. Just make sure that you get it to us by midnight on Sunday. Sunday is when we play the Buccaneers, so make sure you get your calls in by midnight that night. Absolutely. And, of course, if and when we win that game, we expect a lot of excitement heading into the Super Bowl and a lot of voicemails, even more than we have this week. So if you could try to condense your thoughts down to about two minutes, something like that, that would be fantastic. And I do have a quick question, Scott. What's mm-hmm. the deadline? I, I might have missed it. What's that deadline to get in your comments for feedback to if I want to be part of next week's episode? Wayne, that deadline is midnight on Sunday. And again, please, please, please. Keep those voicemails under two minutes. It makes an editing nightmare for my friend, Mr. Anderson. Uh, So do us a a favor and help us out there. Hey, Wayne and Scott. It's Matt in the Carolinas, originally from 920 Oshkosh, Wisconsin, and formerly of Chicago. Um, It's only the end of the first quarter in the game, but I just wanted to call and say what a great season it's been, and it looks like it will continue after tonight. Um, But either way... Uh, thanks for the podcast. It's It's been awesome listening to you guys for the last several years and uh, watching the Packers play so well and really gel as a team this year. So, um, And also here's to Rodgers hopefully winning the MVP in the next uh, couple weeks and the Packers going to the Super Bowl. Go Pack Go! Hey, Matt, thank you so much for the call. I love that we get a call after the first quarter, even before we've won the game. I uh, really love seeing that. As far as Rodgers getting the MVP... I really don't think there's any question at this point, and that's not me being biased. Even the announcers on television are saying nobody else deserves it better than than Aaron Rodgers at this point. And if I'm not mistaken, doesn't that get announced like before the NFC Championship game? Isn't that is, isn't that when that happens? I don't know if there's a hard and fast rule, whether mm-hmm. it's uh, right before that game or maybe after the game before the Super Bowl. It's all fuzzy to me. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure we'll hear about it. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, he's got a lot of things going on. Packers, MVP, Jeopardy, possible <laughs> Super Bowl. Dude's busy. Go, Pack, go! Go, Pack, go! Hey, guys, Andre in L.A. Sorry I had to calm down after the game. I had to give it a couple hours. So I didn't sound crazy on the phone. But what a game, what a game. I loved every bit of it. I love the fact that we got in the red zone and we got stopped a couple times. That lets us know that next week we got room for improvement and we still killed the Rams. We took on a really, really good defense and we pretty much dominated them throughout the game. We, I didn't hear Aaron Donald's name called once throughout that game. They tried their best to stop Devontae Adams. He still got the touchdown. MVS... That's what I meant by, no, you're not Randall Cobb. No, you're not Donald Driver. But for these playoffs, for this run, I need you to play the role 
Oh, Cobb or Driver, I just need you to catch the ball when they're doubling Adams. Bobby T, great catch. The running game on all on, from everyone, especially Jones, tremendous uh, way to block the offensive line. They didn't give up a sack. When's the last time we said in a regular season game, let alone a playoff game, that the Packers didn't give up a sack on Aaron Rodgers? He looked so comfortable. It was beautiful to see the defense. The defense showed up in the playoffs. Are you kidding me? The Packers defense showed up in the playoffs and kept a team to 120 points. Oh, my God. I'm losing my nuts. Oh my goodness. That's after calming down, Andre. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, I love what he said about MVS. Uh, first off, love the energy. I don't think I've ever heard Andre that excited, and he's one of the most excitable callers that we get in there. Uh, but I, I love what he talked about MVS, where Rogers is saying, look, I know you're not Cobb. You know, you're not these other, these other receivers, but I need you to, to fill that role right now. And he's doing it. He's doing it. So very good to see. Do we have more? From Andre, actually? We actually do, Andre. Um, and that was fantastic. So fantastic. He did have a couple more things to bring <clears throat> us. And you could tell that this is after he took a little bit more time to, to focus and, and calm down a little bit more. So the uh, energy's still strong, but I couldn't just splice it together and make it into one because it'd be too obvious that it wasn't. Hey, guys. Andre in L.A. again. Sorry. A little excited. <laughs> Hope I'm not too excited. But this is the first time that I can remember being this excited. Well, no, last year I was pretty excited, but this year it really feels like we can do it. Last year I was worried because we lost all, we got basically whooped up by all the good things last year. This year we have been dominant at home. We've been really good on the road, and we, it's a pretty much the playoffs run through Lambeau. I don't remember if the fans were there, but it felt like the fans were there. I was surprised by how warm it was. Thank you, Global Warming. Oh, I can't believe I'm trying not to get too excited. I'm trying not to get my hopes up too high. I'm sure a lot of fans feel like that, but this feels like our year. This feels like a special year. The defense, ah, sorry. Love you guys. Green and gold, Tom, Danny Cole. Andre in LA. Love you guys. Love you too, Andre. Thanks again for the uh, follow-up call because that was an excellent point about how last year we were excited heading into the championship game, but we all kind of knew in our hearts that after being beat twice that year out on the West Coast, once against the Chargers and once against the Niners, that going out there again without really fixing our issues, that it was going to be a tall order. But this year, I agree, Andre, it feels like we can really do it. Yeah, but I will disagree with them about trying to get your hopes up too high. Get those hopes up. We need that positive energy, man. If anybody's going to bring positive energy, it's going to be you. And uh, you are a shining beacon in terms of positivity for the green and gold. So keep that fire alive, man. Have your have those hopes up. The Packers can do it. It's definitely a possibility. We've got just as much of a shot as anybody else, if not more so. So let's make it happen. Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! What's up, guys? Jared in Colorado. Loving this win. We toppled the number one defense in the NFL and did so in beautiful fashion. Aaron Rodgers, mwah. Aaron Jones, mwah. A.J. Dillon, mwah. Jamal Williams, mwah. Robert Tunyon, mwah. Can I give any more fresh uh, kisses out? Of course I can. It's the green and gold. They're kicking butt in the playoffs, and it's time to take this thing to the big dance. Go, Pack, go. Green and gold till dead and cold, baby. Awesome, Jared. Thanks so much for the call. The chef kisses. There, I, we could have done one for each of the lists I did earlier in the game. There were so many good things to talk about in this game. Love the enthusiasm and energy, Jared. And I'm loving this win just as much as you are, buddy. And one more chef kiss to the crowd that was at Lambeau Field. Yeah. Mwah. Beautiful. It was so cool to see even those overhead shots. They were just kind of peppered around there, socially distant, but it was really cool to see. Oh, did you notice, by the way, those those boards that they had that yeah. they had passed out that were supposed to be for like, you know, holding up to cheer the team. And whenever the whenever the Packers were on defense, they were banging them against the 
against the uh, benches, which was it was a great distraction. I think they're gonna think twice about doing that again yeah, in, uh, this week in case people start banging each other over the heads with them. No, no, no. I think they're going to want to keep doing it because there's not enough crowd to make a full impact noise. Like when the, and when it's full, they were loud. They need something to make that noise. You were loud, but not as loud as a full stadium. Well, impossible. Yeah, but <clears throat> I also saw some people brought their own markers and made their own messages. I saw one lady holding up a sign that said something like she wrote on the back, and it said something along the lines of, "What time are the bears supposed to show up?" I was told they'd be here. Oh man. <laughs> oh snap. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, sir. Art from Texas here. What an outstanding game from the pack attack. The offense played great. The defense played play great. They did awesome. I hope they can ride that same momentum into the NFC title game, baby, in title town. And hopefully they can carry it into the Super Bowl. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but I have a good feeling, guys. I have a good feeling. So we'll see. I hope AJ uh, Dillon's injury is not anything serious, but um, it's on to the NFC title game. Ow! Go Pack Go! You didn't go to a bit cold. Go Pack Go indeed, Art in Texas calling about the Pack Attack, and I totally agree, hoping we can ride this momentum into the title game and beyond, and I too, Art, have a very good feeling about this. Even I have a really good feeling about this, Wayne. That's saying something. That's true. That's so very true. Green and yellow, green and yellow, green and yellow, green and yellow. Hey, it's Pete, Megan, and Wayne. All we got to say is, Matt LaFleur, Coach of the Year. Are you serious? NFC Championship two years in a row. He's been a put last year in the past, and honestly... If, if he doesn't get coach of the year and Aaron doesn't get MVP, it's rigged. And, and yeah, Matt, like, he deserves all the respect, honestly. Like, yeah, I know it was a hell of a matchup between him and McVay. I get it. I understand they have a lot of, like, ties. They're super, like, relatable in many ways. They, they've, they're connected in a lot of ways. But LaFleur, honestly, Matt LaFleur, hell of a coach. Hell of a season, hell of a year. Mm. Let's go to the NFC Championship two mm. years in a row. Second year head coach, honestly, coach of the year. Oh, easy peasy. And the collaboration with Aaron Charles Rogers, my goodness. Oh, hell yeah. Aaron threw the juke boots on Leonard Floyd on that TD. Love to see it. I love when Aaron, personally, I love this beat, by the way. I love when Aaron yeah. Rogers runs in a touchdown. The ultimate collaborator, distributor, teammate, you know, forget the news, the headlines, they don't know Jack. The, the only people that know squad about Aaron are those in the locker room, and they all have nothing but positive things to say. He's a great leader, a great teammate, and it is absolutely wonderful to see him crushing it on the field with the best squad in the game. We're number one. One, not done. One, not done. All we got to say is, Alan with the PB! Alan to the drop! Okay, we get it. Understandable. It's all in his head. Yeah, shift happened. And that touchdown was probably the coolest touchdown of the game, probably the play of the game. Honestly, that was was awesome. Alan, Alan Lazard, baby, let's go! That is your dagger! Woo! All right. Thank you so much, Megan and Pete. As always, love the energy. I love what they mentioned about uh, uh, LaFleur and the coach of the Rams being uh, being coaching buddies. They, they did a little piece on that. They have a high level of respect for one another, and I always love seeing that. Uh, there there was even a touching moment at the game last night with the Bucks and the Saints where Brady and Breeze were out on the field embracing. I love to see People from opposing teams just having that respect for one another. It was really cool to see. And I'm with Megan. If LaFleur doesn't get coach of the year, I don't know what's up. For it being his second year and taking his team to the NFC Championship two years in a row, his first two seasons, that's unheard of in this league. 
Uh, it's it's amazing. And then the last thing I want I should have mentioned this in our in our highlights of the game when we talked about uh, Rogers running in that touchdown. That move that he pulled on Floyd was amazing. He looked like a freaking running back and just made him yeah. fall down on his face, look pretty stupid, and able. To, oh, it was so good to see. I loved it. Who are we facing in the NFC Championship? It doesn't matter who we're facing in the NFC Championship. This is Steven, your number one Chiefs head in Great Falls, Montana, and we just dismantled the number one defense in the league. So bring on the Saints, bring on the Bucks. it doesn't matter. Just like Lincoln Park said, in the end, it doesn't even matter. Go Pack Go! Steven in Montana, thank you very much for calling in, <laughs> channeling that uh, like wrestling energy and how it doesn't really matter who we're going to get. And now we do know a day later who we are going to get, Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. We're going to preview that game in a little bit. Scott, I hope you have some keys to victory. We're going to need them. Absolutely. It's coming up, I promise. And a great way to put it, Steven, saying that we dismantled the number one defense in the league. And you know, please forgive mine and Scott's voices. We're a little bit choppy this morning because I think we both blew out our voices cheering in the game just the other day. And oh yeah, it, we're still <laughs> excited. Plus, I did do a little bit of shouting at the other games yesterday. Go pack, go, go pack, go, go pack, go. Oh yeah, baby, we're going to the NFC Championship game. Whoa! Oh. I can't. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, let me calm myself down so I can actually talk. Oh, oh my gosh. Second NFC Championship game in two years. Third in five years. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember when we, when we went to Atlanta when we really had no chance. <laughs> oh, I just. I can't, I can't believe we're. We're, uh, <laughs> we're going, baby. We're going to the NFC Championship game. And we're going to punch our ticket to the Super Bowl in Miami. It's happening. There is no doubt whatsoever. None. I don't care who comes to Lambeau Field. We're going to beat the pants off of them. Or their capris or whatever they're wearing. I, 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 doubt, in, I doubt in January in Lambeau they're going to be wearing their little short, their short uh, leggings or whatever they, want, whatever they are. But anyway. Oh my gosh, that was such an amazing game. Totally, do totally dominated the Rams. The number one defense in the NFL. We had more passing yards against the Rams than any team all year. We had more rushing yards against the number one defense than any than they had uh, suffered all year. <laughs> What's left to prove? Uh, I, 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 I was, I was on the, the bus of uh, get rid of Mike, Mike uh, Petten. But right now, this team is gelling, gelling like Magellan. They got the they got the swag, they got the confidence, they got the best quarterback to play the game in who knows how long. Uh, he, I'm sorry, Tom Brady, but you ain't the goat. And now, Tom Brady is coming to Lambeau Field in January to face all against Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. I can't wait to see this game next week. I know Tom Brady obviously has a lot of experience with cold weather games, but he's been in Tampa Bay for a year. And he doesn't have the weapons that Aaron Rodgers has. And like I said, I just don't think Tom Brady is as good as Aaron Rodgers. I think Aaron Rodgers, had you put Aaron Rodgers in, in uh, New England, they probably would have had another four championships. Aaron Rodgers does a lot more with less than Tom Brady does. Tom Brady is a system quarterback. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, but I don't think uh, he's as good as his stats, his stats show. He has benefited from one of the best um, coaches to ever to coach the game with Belichick, but they've also been caught cheating twice. So there's that. I look forward to a great game. Uh, next weekend, and I can't wait to see our, our boys on the bus to go to Miami, Florida, 
to, to, <laughs> to go to the Super Bowl and bring back a fifth Lombardi trophy. I am just tickled pink. <laughs> Wayne, Trent, Scott, all you guys, Dictus, much love to you guys. Let's bring the Lombardi trophy home where it belongs. All right, Dan, thank you so much. I can hear and feel the excitement in your voice. And also, are you cross-country skiing while you're recording that? I'm not sure what was going on there. Uh, also, just some, some clarification, uh, the Super Bowl is in Tampa, not Miami. Just want to make sure that uh, you know where, where we're potentially going. But uh, I loved when Dan said that we were going to beat the Capris off the Bucks. That I, I don't know if you have if you record our voices while we listen to those, Wayne, but um, I laughed out loud when he said beat the Capris off the Bucks. That made me that made me giggle. <laughs> uh yeah, and he reinforced what we talked about, uh, having more passing yards and rushing yards against the Rams. You know, when they're the toughest defense in the league. We did that. Um as far as Brady being the GOAT, I know I'm a little biased to him with Rodgers being a uh, being, you know, on the Packers, but he said, Dan said something about, you know, like, well, he's always had somebody good around him. He's always had good coaching. He's not with Belichick this year. Sure. He's got Gronk. He's got Brown, but he's not under that same coaching leadership anymore. And he's bringing the Buccaneers to the NFC championship for the first time. in, however, under his first year in that team, I still have a lot of mad respect for the man. I'm not a fan of him, <laughs> uh, especially after the Deflate Gate scandal. And I don't know, there's something about the way he looks and talks that just he just has this smug attitude that I just don't like a ton. But I respect the player. It's it's hard to uh, argue with people calling him the goat, but Aaron Rodgers sure is giving him a run for his money for sure. You are too kind, Mr. Scott Clark. Too kind indeed. Uh, Dan, and of course, it's always good to have uh, Trent help us out as well. Um, <laughs> I think Dan's getting back at us for all the times he was called Dave and Brian and who, whatever else was going on. A uh, second NFC championship game in a row. Again, that doesn't happen very long. But an excellent point that uh, hasn't been brought up yet. Uh, Mike Pettin, he might be around a little bit longer. What do you think? Yeah, we've been complaining about him quite a bit this year, but uh, he's uh, he's shaking things up over there quite a bit, which makes me happy. And if you're happy, I'm happy. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, I do. Marshall Maddox here, checking in from Northern Illinois. Go pack, go. What a great game that was the other day, and a great game it was again today. Battle of the Bays in Green Bay. Here we go. Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers going to come out on top, of course. And I just got to say, what a day for the Lizard. Really redeemed himself after that bad play and that big, long bomb and caught that touchdown to go ahead. All I got to say is go, Pat, go, and can't wait for next week. Awesome to hear from you, Marshall. Thank you very much for giving us a call at 920-3-PAC-GO. The Battle of the Bays. And, of course, Lazard. Lazard redeeming himself. Yes, thank goodness. It's great to see Aaron Rodgers going back to these guys that might have had a drop and giving them a chance to save the game. Absolutely. It, you know, As long as they redeem themselves, I'm okay with the mistakes. Mistakes happen. Everybody has drops, and they're doing way more than I could ever do on that field. Uh, so, yeah. When, when they get redeemed, it, it definitely feels great. Thanks for the call, Marshall. I appreciate it. When I first heard that voicemail, I thought, is Scott pranking me? <laughs> Northern <laughs> Illinois and all that. Well, it's funny you say that, Wayne. That's actually my brother. My, my brother's name is Marshall, and he called in. It only took me two years on this show to get him to call in and do a voicemail. So thanks, bro. Very nice indeed. Thank you very much for your calls, everybody. Our weekly poll in our Facebook group at PackersCommunity.com, as well as on Twitter at PackersFanPod, how much impact do you think the projected Lambeau weather will be on the Buccaneers when they come to town? Is it going to have a ton of impact? The Buccaneers won't know what hit them or somewhat, but the Packers still got to be careful or none solely because Tom and Gronk remember the cold. What do you think, Scott? I'm not too worried. Or, I mean, I'm, I'm worried. I should say I am worried. I don't think that they're worried about the cold. Uh, like uh, you said in one of these comments here, Brady and uh, um, 
Gronkowski are from New England. They know what it's like to play in the cold. The rest of the Bucks, who knows? And it's really hard to say how how much that weather actually does affect. I mean, it's easy for us to look at the game against Los Angeles this week and think, well, you know, they're from Los Angeles where it was 80 degrees when they took off and got here and it's in it's, you know, close to freezing. That's definitely a factor. Who knows? It's it's very hard. I mean, it it's 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 kind of easy to say that because they are the number 1 defense and we did that well against them, but I think uh, we I think they just got outplayed. Um, I don't know. I I, I don't think Tom and Gronk have any issues with the cold. I'm 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 more worried about uh, how we're going to play than how we're going to handle the weather. And of course, there are 53 other Buccaneers on the team. It's not right. just Tom and Gronk. Now, I'm leaning toward the somewhat. It's going to make a difference, I think for sure, but the Packers still need to be careful. If the Buccaneers didn't have Tom and Gronk, I would say a ton. The Buccaneers won't know what hit them. But let's mm-hmm. see what the listener. Oh, the, the numbers, how they break down before the comments. 68% did go with the somewhat of a factor. 22% said no factor at all, and 10% said a ton of, of factor, and the Bucks won't know what hit them. Mm-hmm. And we had some comments on the poll as well. First off, Janelle said, this was one of my two worries about going against Brady, the fact that he remembers how to play in the cold. My other fear is that the younger players will be intimidated by him. That's something to think about. A lot of these players, this may only be the second time they faced again, they faced Brady. There's something that comes with that name that is intimidating, and I get that. With that said, we have played him once this year. We got our butts handed to us, but they know how to deal with him now and can learn from the mistakes on that game and move on forward. Janelle goes on to say that from what I just watched, I think we can definitely beat them as long as they don't let the name Brady scare them. So she agrees with me. One quick thing. I think some of the Buccaneers need to be afraid of the name Rogers. There you go. I like it. Next comment comes from David, who said, obviously, Brady knows the cold. I'm more curious to see how it affects their fast linebackers. Those guys can fly and make it difficult to have running lanes. I'm thinking it might have more impact on them and the secondary than offensive wise. Interesting thought. And super fan Aaron Peterson. They should be more worried about how that defense impacts our offense. Yeah. Uh, Amen to that. And Peter, if we play a perfect game, we destroy them. Only the Packers will beat the Packers. Apparently, Brady doesn't like the cold, but he played in it a lot, so we'll see how much it might affect him at his age. Tampa has a lot more than of a loaded team. That's a good point, too. Brady does have a few more years on Rodgers, so that could play in our favor. Who knows? Uh, Dan says, I was in the Army 23 years. I grew up in Wisconsin. Believe me, that cold blood is gone. They've been in Tampa a year. Even Arians pointed out to this fact early in the season, saying he didn't feel Tom or Gronk had quite become accustomed to the Tampa weather. Takes longer to become comfy with a cold than the heat. RD will pressure Brady early and often. He has a history of being thrown off his game if under pressure, so it falls on Fournette. He's a recycled running back who's good, but he doesn't have the young legs we have. And they haven't had a week off like we did. Plus, we already played them. Final score, Packers 35, Tampa 17 given us his prediction right there. Thanks, Dan. And I love that prediction. I I bet you do. (laughs) Duh. Uh, Great email as well here. Hey, Wayne and Scott, this is CCR from Green Bay, Wisconsin. What a great game we witnessed, although we had two unsuccessful two-point conversions. It was surprising that our defense was so great. Uh, Not to me, Caleb, Kathy, and Roy Fisher. But anyways, back to the email. (laughs) Uh, We also saw some great things on offense as well. Aaron Rodgers running for a touchdown. Alan Lazard redeeming himself and doing a great job. Uh, we are hoping that A.J. Dillon will be okay. And no matter what, go Pack Go! Bleed green and gold till dead and cold. Caleb, Kathy, and Roy Fisher, a.k.a. CCR. <laughs> I love that, CCR. Also, another email says, Hey, Scott, I feel like I have to state this right off the bat. Are you sure you're not going to record an album? Yes, 100%. I will not be recording an album. That was, now, I apologize again for, for putting your ears through that last week. I'm, I, I don't know. I forgot to forward you the email that came into the feedback that uh, uh, one of the top K-pop bands is uh, looking for a replacement. <laughs> Are they? All right. I'll and? get right on that, man. <laughs> uh, this emailer goes on and says, The good news, the Packers never trailed the Rams, but I am scared if I write anything bad about the Packers that Wayne will think I'm harsh. Hey, welcome to it, man. Welcome to my world. For the first time ever in his career, Aaron Rodgers will get to play in a NFC Championship game at Lambeau Field as a starter. Go Pack Go, Go Pack Go, 
Go Pack Go. Didn't he play in 2007 as a starter? That's so long ago. Okay. I thought he did. Anyway. He might have been behind Favre. I don't know. Maybe he was behind Favre. It's been so long. Anyway, he goes on and says, and how about this for big news from that? Aaron Rodgers and Jeopardy also confirmed it, that he will be a guest host for Jeopardy as they look to replace the late Alex Trebek as host of Jeopardy as they are having interim hosts until some point that they name a successor. There's no word on yet if he has filmed or when he will film episodes as a guest host or even more importantly, when the episodes will air on TV. Think about how cool it would be to beat Tom Brady before the Super Bowl. And imagine how cool would it be to celebrate with a meal from Culver's and then over the border to Indiana to get candy from Albany's. The 1256 report is reporting that the Packers will will, uh, lead into the game 6,500 season ticket holders for the game, so even more season ticket holders will be able to attend the game. Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! Go Pack Go! Stephen Verheron. Thanks so much, Stephen. And an interesting point because, you know, over the years there's always been talk about, you know, what if this is the year we get to have Brady versus Rodgers in the Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. But now that Brady's in the NFC, that's not going to happen. Of course, there's a new top dog in the AFC that we might have to face if we make it all the way. But sure, it would be very cool to knock out Tom Brady even before the Super Bowl. Especially because we don't want them to have that first thing happen to them with home field advantage. Because that's never happened in the NFL. And I do not want to be the team that's responsible for giving that to Brady. No way, no sir. Yeah, the closest it ever came was, I believe there was um, Super Bowl, might have been Steelers versus Rams, and it was in Southern California, but it was at like the Rose Bowl, uh, not at the Rams Stadium. So it didn't count as a home game, and the Rams didn't win anyway. So There you go. We got some more comments from the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community group. First off, Jared, definitely need to be careful if there's any time where Scott Clark's consistent overture of not getting cocky needs to be emphasized. It's against Tom Brady, who's four quarters away from another Super Bowl appearance. Granted, I haven't gotten the sense that they have been cocky lately, so that's good. And I do agree, except for that little bit in the third quarter, maybe. All in all, I truly believe the Packers can win if they stick with what has gotten them to this point. The one thing in common between the Bucks' win tonight and their win against the Packers in the regular season? Turnovers. Rodgers threw two interceptions and Breeze threw, what, three tonight? Protect the football, run the ball, let Rodgers pick apart defense reads, get after Brady the way the Packers got after Goff. And boy, wouldn't you know it, Jared has uh, given a slight preview to my keys to victory, which we'll go over in just a few short minutes. Thank you so much, Jared. And as always, thank you to all of you for your calls, emails, comments, and support. If you too would like to join the Packers Fan Podcast Facebook community and be part of this conversation as well, please be sure to head over to PackersCommunity.com, especially on game day for our live game discussion thread. You will not want to miss it. And if you do want to invite some of your friends into the group, just let them know that they do need to answer the three easy peasy questions before getting allowed in, just to make sure they're not spies from the opponent we're going to play next week. And with that, (laughs) your 13-time NFL champion, Green Bay Packers, guess what? You probably heard the news. We're hosting the NFC Championship game, and coming to town are the Tom Brady Gronkineers, otherwise known as the Buccaneers. I had to throw it in one last time. It's Sunday, January 24th at 2.05 p.m. Central. Weird time for a kickoff, but there you have it. All time, the Packers do lead the series 33-32-1. to and Yikes. Wasn't Uh, there a one-game difference against the Rams as well? Didn't we have just one game more than them? Uh, But now it's two. Now it's two, but it was one going into this game, which, you know, same thing. And same thing after we win. We'll be ahead by two. (laughs) <laughs> uh, the Packers and Bucks used to be NFC Central division mates. That was way back in the day. And it'll be the first time that two of the greatest modern era quarterbacks will face each other in the playoffs. And of course, I think there's going to be TV ratings for this particular matchup. What say you? You think so? <laughs> Definitely. I don't know if we can handle that much hype, but yeah, yeah, we can. And we absolutely have to beat the Buccaneers for a million reasons. And like Scott alluded to, especially making sure that Tom Brady and the Buccaneers are not the first team ever to play a Super Bowl in their home stadium. So I feel like if they did, that would pretty much seal the deal for them winning the Super Bowl. I don't care what happens, who makes it in the AFC. Like it's just got to, it wouldn't have to happen for them. So do not let that happen, please. And Sunday's la 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 Lambo weather looks like this. Well, let's just say it. 
it might be the below freezing weather we've been expecting, you know, partly cloudy. Sometimes they say we might get five inches of snow, a high around 27 degrees Fahrenheit. Of course, the forecast is changing a bit up and down every day, but it's safe to say that your beer, if you're in the stands, is not going to get very warm. So, and oh, like Andy on Twitter said, they say revenge is a dish best served cold. So 25 degrees on a frozen tundra sounds about perfect. Well said, Andy. I love that. That's pretty cool. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into my keys to a Packers victory over the Buccaneers. Uh, my very first one, like Jared mentioned, turnovers on both sides of the ball. At our last meeting, the Packers scored the first 10 points of the game, came out the gate strong in the first quarter. But that was the last time we scored thanks to two interceptions by Rodgers. If we're going to come out victorious this game, we have to hold onto the ball and keep it out of Brady's hands as much as possible. This is the time to flip the script from the last game and capitalize on our secondary's ability to pick Brady's passes instead. I think that this is going to be vital for us to come out ahead. Number two, do not ease up in the third quarter. I've watched too many come from behind wins by Brady to know that you can never underestimate what the man can do in the second half of a game. I don't care if we're up by three scores in the third. Play the entire game as if you're behind. There's simply no room for resting on your laurels in an NFC championship game. With that said, let's hope we're actually up in the second half. It sure didn't happen last time we met, and we were playing come from behind, which I do not want to see. Lastly, soak in that crowd noise, baby. This is the first time the Packers have hosted the NFC Championship game since 2007. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the second time Rodgers has played during the NFC Championship game at Lambeau. Despite COVID-19, 6,500 season ticket holders will be allowed to attend. Plus, quite a few frontline workers and first responders have been invited. Last week, there were over 8,500 fans in attendance. And this week, there should be around the same. It's the most fans we've had at Lambeau since the pandemic really took off. And the pack should use this to their advantage. Bask in the love of the smaller crowd and use it to motivate you guys. Oh, and the stadium should definitely pass out those boards for the fans to bang against the benches while Tampa has the ball. Crowd noise has the potential to be a huge factor during this game, and we should definitely take advantage of it. I love it, because I just want to bang on the board all day. <laughs> whack, whack. Uh, See, you should have been doing the parody song, man, not me. But I picked more games closer, so... I know, I know. Uh, I and know. speaking of, our predictions for last week went as such. Uh, I predicted that the Packers would win 21-17. to Wayne, you predicted that the Packers would win 31-21. to the final score wound up being 32 to 18. And what was interesting is that each of us had one of our scores only one point off. Yeah. However, uh, your differential was only four altogether. Mine wound up being a 12. So even if we were uh, keeping track, you still would have come out ahead. Don't most hit singles have a B side? They do have a B side, yeah. Have you recorded yours? I'm just I just. Uh, there's no B side, man. Don't get excited. It's not standalone happening. hit single. Okay. Oh my goodness. And uh, this week, I think we're going to have a very high scoring game. I'm going to say Packers 35, Buccaneers 27. How about you, sir? Wow, that's the kind of prediction I would normally make. 35, I 27. I see what you're doing there. I think with the weather forecast changing every day, it's hard to keep track. The latest I heard is there could be, you know, one to five inches of snow. So just with that in mind, I'm going to go this time with the lower scoring game. Packers winning 21 to 14. Interesting. Nothing but touchdowns. Nothing but touchdowns and holding the Buccaneers to 14 points or less. I like it. I like it. I, I love how I'm being more optimistic this week than you are. That's kind of that's kind of interesting. Because it's the championship game. I'm trying to pick with my head because I my hear. initial thought was Packers 42, uh, Buccaneers 3. But nice. no. <laughs> That'll be hilarious if it happens. Let's talk about some other surprise NFL happenings that happened this weekend. First off, Patrick Mahomes got his bell rung during the divisional game against the Browns. Turns out he did suffer a concussion, but Andy Reid did say um, publicly that he's doing better. And then I don't know if you saw Henny came in to cover for Mahomes he did a pretty stellar job backing up to close out the game, but it will be very interesting to see if Mahomes will be playing next week. I don't know if you saw that, saw the hit first off. The hit didn't look too bad to me, but when he got up, he looked like he didn't know where he was. I don't know if you remember that old commercial from uh, Snickers back in the 90s where uh, uh, the guy's like, you know, where are you? We're at the game. Who am I? You're the coach. And who are you? I'm Batman. <laughs> yes, I do remember. And yeah, I, I watched all the games this weekend, and that was just strange, like you said, how it played out. 
And I think, I mean, you can't take the instinct out of Patrick Mahomes, but he should have not been trying to run on that play because he did injure his big toe earlier in the game. And we don't know how bad that toe is. He was hobbling around. He should not have been trying to do his usual Mahomes thing. Uh, Otherwise, he could have avoided that whole thing. But Mm -hmm. I did see that, uh, you know, as it became apparent the Chiefs were going to end up winning that game, uh, Mahomes tweeted out because of how well Henny was doing with hashtag anything can happen. (laughs) <laughs> so he's getting uh, creative. Maybe that was his concussion talking. I don't know. But uh, I do think the Browns kind of got ripped off a bit. You know, we can't blame that. The whole game loss on the refs. But there were bad no calls on that uh, goal line drive because the Chief did lead with his helmet to force that fumble. And so that should have been called. And there was some severe taunting by a Chief player against one of the Browns, standing over him, just screaming in his face. And I remember earlier this season or last season, a Packer getting his first warning of possibly being ejected. And all he really did was kind of look at the guy wrong. So I thought that was a bit of a double standard. And I also want to say, go Buffalo Bills. Man, taking care of business. Who would have thought that would have happened? Never in a million years. Uh, The the Bills are relevant. This is kind of cool to see. Very cool to see. Now, can they keep that up against Kansas City? That's going to be interesting to see, but uh, I also thought it was going to be interesting to see the Browns going up against the Chiefs. So we'll we'll and, we'll see what happens. You know, depending on how well you know Patrick Mahomes is healing over his concussion or how well his toe is healing, could have some factor. And the Buffalo Bills are fired up. If anybody can beat the Chiefs in Kansas City, I think it would be the Bills. So it's going to be must watch TV as we come off the high of the Packers Bucks game. Absolutely. And speaking of the Bills, I don't know if you saw this as well, but uh, during the Bills-Ravens game, uh, Lamar Jackson Jackson was uh, injured. And the Bills fans, instead of getting all excited that uh, you know their opponent is no longer a threat, they actually decided to go find Lamar Jackson's charity. And they started a campaign on Twitter for Bills fans to donate eight bucks to his charity each because Lamar Jackson's number is eight. And they had, were saying things like, hey, I know my team won, but Lamar Jackson is the kind of athlete that we want to see healthy in this league. Much respect for the man. Let's donate to his charity. And I just thought that was a classy thing to do. Very so, nice. I missed that story. Yeah, that was really, really cool to see. And that's sportsmanship, man. I, I just, I seriously love that. That's something that you don't see enough of in fandom anywhere. And I just thought that was really cool to see. So they're raising a lot of money for that charity. Also, want to give my little plug here. If you love video games as much as I do, I have another podcast called The Gaming Outsider where we chat about my favorite hobby every single week. And this week we are talking about Star Wars video games because uh, if you've been following the industry at all, uh, EA is a huge, massive company that has had a monopoly on the Star Wars license for quite a while. And Disney has loosened the reins on that a bit and allowed other developers to start making games based in that universe. So we're talking about what we would like to see and from which developers. So we've called it Star Wars wish lists. So uh, be sure to tune into that if you love video games and or you love Star Wars because we will be chatting that up this week as well. Our website is thegamingoutsider.com and you can listen to that podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, wherever you listen to this show as well. As always, we have the value for value model here at your Packers Fan Podcast, if your budget allows it. Everything you pledge goes back into the show, helping with hosting costs, audio softwares, and the Packers Fan Podcast swag that you can get at some of the higher support levels. Details can be found at patreon.com forward slash Packers Fan Podcast, and we would love the support. And speaking of support, special thanks and a huge Go Pack Go to Packers Fan Podcast Patreon MVP, Dan Dyler, helping out the show at the Jim Ringo-inspired pledge level. Also, a big Go Pack Go for listener Bryant for all of your Patreon support at the legendary Willie Wood level. And Go Pack goes to our friends in the Texas-only Green Bay Packers fanatics. Your AR-12 level support is fantastic. And some hearty Go Pack goes to our Brett Favre level Patreon supporters, Andre in LA, Lawrence Harvey, and Jeff Summerfield. And Go Pack Go also for these great Curly Lambo supporters, Beth Mentick, Joe Christensen, Matt Haig, Hank Davis, from the TPE Network of Podcasts and Remy Lavictois. Thanks for all your support, financial and otherwise. 
The unofficial Packers fan podcast is not yet affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers. And remember to have our voicemail feedback hotline number ready after we beat the Bucks. It's 9203-PAC-GO. Be ready to share your excitement right after the game because we've got a quick turnaround next week. And if at all possible, try to keep your messages under two minutes because if we win, I expect a lot of awesome feedback. Also, please consider following us on Twitter. Our handle is at PackersFanPod. If you'd like to follow me personally, my handle is at GoCastScott, and Wayne's is at Wayne Henderson. And now, the Texas-only Green Bay Packers fanatics sending out some Go Pack Goes to help the Pack beat the Buccaneers. This is Dawn down here in Texas, a.k.a. Granny Cheese. Hi, I'm James. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Melissa. Hi, I'm Susan. Hi, I'm Kim. Hi, I'm Lisa Montgomery, and we want to say, Go Pack Go! Go. 